Hey everybody, Mr. G here. Thanks for stopping by for another art project today. Today we're going to be working on a portrait of a giraffe, but this giraffe is going to be inspired by the French painter Henri Matisse. Henri Matisse was a painter who tried to use lots of different colors in his artwork and not technically realistic color. So as you can see here, my giraffe is very colorful. So that's what we're going to be trying to do today. So for this project, you're going to need pencils, and then some sort of coloring medium. So that can be crayons, markers, or colored pencils, whatever you have at home available to you. I'm gonna be using crayons for my project today. So gather up your supplies and get ready to create. So first we're gonna look at my finished example of the Henry Matisse giraffe. Again, Henry Matisse was an artist that loved to use a lot of different colors in his paintings. And so that's what we're gonna be trying to achieve with our portrait of our giraffe. Um, a couple things to talk about before we start our actual paper drawing is how we're gonna use lines and shapes on our design. And so what you're gonna notice on my giraffe is that a few parts of lines, we're gonna use lines for the neck and the uh, smile on his face. We're gonna use oval shapes for the snout of the giraffe, for the ears, the top parts of the antlers. Circles are gonna be used throughout for the eyes, the spots um, on the neck and for the nostrils on the nose as well. Now this is going to be considered a portrait of the giraffe. So when you get your paper out, you want to make sure that your paper is up and down vertically long ways. That's called portrait style. We don't want to have it long ways left and right. That's um, called landscape. So if you were doing like an outdoor scene in your artwork, you probably want to have it be more like this. You'd have more room for the sky and the ground, trees, rivers, whatever you might be doing in a landscape. But we're creating a portrait, so we want it to be portrait style. And so again, that's going to be longer up and down. That's going to help us fit more of our giraffe's neck and head on our paper. So keep that in mind when you start drawing. I'm going to first take you through on my dry erase board. So pretend this is my paper, and you can practice along with me now if you want. So what we're going to start with is we're going to start with the oval shape of his snout. There's going to be a fairly big oval. Notice it's... Um, you know, pretty evenly centered in the paper, but I do need to leave room above that for the top part of his head. If I put this oval way too high, I'm not going to have room for all these ears and eyes and all those other parts. So you want to make sure that it's, you know, not quite in the center, but a little bit higher, but you do need to have that room um, above it too for the other parts of the giraffe's face. Okay. So when I draw this oval, it's going to be right about there. And again, I'm trying to center it on my board here so that there's even space on the left and right, but I'm also having a good amount of space above it and then a larger amount of space below so I can have that long neck um, for the giraffe too. Inside of this oval, what I'm going to draw is two circles. One, two. So right now it kind of looks like eyes on a face, and I'm going to add in a smile too. I want to have a happy giraffe. So I'm going to add a line for a smile. So right now it look, just looks like a face, but this is actually going to become the snout of the giraffe. So from here, I'm going to do a rainbow curved line around this. Again, it's not going to touch the top because I do want to have room for the ears and those little antlers on top too. So I'm going to start here with my marker on the side of the oval on the left side. And I'm going to draw a rainbow curve around the top. So it's kind of like I'm giving a hat to my person. Okay. So now I'm going to add in a M shape, kind of like a McDonald's arch. So I'm gonna have a little arch go up, down, up and down again. So it kind of curves up, comes down a little bit, and then curves back up a little bit. Inside of there, I'm gonna do two small circles. So now we're seeing the giraffe's eyes there, okay? I'm gonna have two ovals on the sides of this head little circles inside the interior part of the ears. And then above here, I'm gonna have two little antlers. So I have two lines coming up, like the number 11, on both the right and the left side. So two number 11s, and then go ahead and put another oval on top of those. Okay, I'm also gonna add just a few little spots. They can be more oval or circular, it's up to you. And if you wanna give your giraffe some eyebrows, you can do that as well. So right now the head of our giraffe is complete. So now the important part is when we ever think of a giraffe, we think of it having a long neck. So my neck is going to start out kind of close together, like I said earlier. 
So two lines close together. And then I'm going to extend each of those down. This one I'm going to curve off to the left, kind of to the left corner of my board. So it's going to curve like that. And this one is going to curve a little bit to the, to the right. So it's going to get a little bit longer as it comes down. Okay, so it's wider down here, closer together up here. So as you draw those two lines, they should be going away from each other. Okay, and if it doesn't quite look right to you, you know, you can erase it. Try to press a little lightly with your pencil and draw light until you get it right. So let's say you do something like this. You just have two lines like that. They come straight down parallel with each other. That's fine. You might not have as much room to color in there, but that's okay. You still have a good neck. So you might draw it like that. But maybe what you want to stay away from is a neck that goes like this, where it gets really, really wide, too wide. Okay, it doesn't quite look like a long skinny giraffe neck. So I'm going to again start with two little marks there and then I'm going to have a line come down a little bit. This one comes up. I just like to open it up a little bit more at the bottom than it is at the top. And then inside of the neck I'm going to add some more oval or circle shapes for the spots. You might have kind of a half circle too. So it kind of looks like the neck is wrapping around a little more realistically there, okay? So as you're seeing, we're using a lot of just lines, circles, and ovals throughout, um, and just the way we put them together is creating the shape of the giraffe. And again, my board is oriented vertically up and down. That's called portrait styles. That's giving me a lot more room to draw up and down for the whole head and the neck. So now I'm gonna grab my piece of paper and we're gonna move on with the actual drawing. All right, so I have my paper, and right now, what do you notice? My paper isn't oriented the right way. It's longer left and right. It's horizontal landscape style. We're not making a landscape, we're making a portrait. So I wanna take my paper and turn it this way. So again, you can compare my paper this way to my finished example here. See how they're turning the opposite way? So you wanna make sure that your paper is longer up and down so you have more room for your giraffe. Okay, I'm gonna be drawing this with pencil first. Um, again, try to draw a little more lightly with your pencil when you draw. If you push too hard, it might be harder to erase. So on the back of my paper here, I'm just gonna demonstrate that a little bit. I'm gonna press really hard with my pencil and just do a little scribble here. And that's how I, you know, some students sometimes draw like that. And then when they go to erase, it's too dark. And even when they erase it, you can still see the smudging and that there. So instead, I'm going to press softly with my pencil, not pushing too hard with it. So that way, if I do need to make a change to my giraffe, like we talked about with the neck, you know, when I go to erase that, that's going to erase completely. I'm not going to be able to see maybe that original line, or maybe I had a spot where I didn't want a spot. You can make changes more easily by drawing light until you get it right. So keep that in mind while you're drawing your giraffe. Again, we're going to start with the oval of the snout. So it's going to be um, up near the top, but not all the way to the top. Again, we need to leave room for the eyes, the ears, the antlers, all of that. So I'm going to draw it lightly. So in case I need to move it, I can. I'm going to draw a big oval like that, and I am leaving room enough above the head, so I'm okay with that. But again, if I needed to erase it, I could erase it, and it erases it enough that I can't see those lines too much. Okay, I'm going to add two circles inside of there for the nostrils. One, two. Again, we're kind of making a face right now, but it's going to eventually become the snout of our giraffe. I'm going to add a smile to my happy giraffe. I'm going to put a hat on him. So again, putting the hat on this person's face, it's going to be a rainbow arch. I'm going to start on the left side of my oval here. I'm just going to arch up and around and then have it touch this side of the oval here. And I do need a little, a little room above that. Still, if I had this touch the top of my paper, I wouldn't have room for those antlers or maybe even the ears. So you need to be aware of that. Okay, I'm going to do that. those golden arches here. So I'm going to have it curve up, almost like I'm making a U, upside down U, but I'm going to stop. And I'm going to curve back up and then back down. So it touches that. So now I'm starting to form the giraffe's face and it doesn't quite look like a person anymore. So I'm going to add the actual eyes in there. I'm going to put two little dots in there. I'm going to have the ears on the left and right side touching this arched line. So 
Those are going to be more oval shapes. Might put a little one inside of it too for the inside of the ears. And then again for the antlers, we're using the number 11 twice. One, two, and then an oval on top of each of those for those little tiny antlers that are on a giraffe. There might be a more technical name for them, but I do not know it. All right, I'm gonna give them some little happy eyebrows there too. So now the face of my giraffe is done. So now I need to go on and make the neck. So again, I'm gonna start my lines a little closer together here. Two short little lines just to make sure I have them where I want them. Those look good. And then I'm gonna do one line at a time. This first line on the left side, I'm gonna kind of curve a little bit more. It's gonna curve kind of down towards this bottom left corner. So just a slow line, gentle curve like that. And then this one's gonna come down. I'm just gonna do a very gentle curve right at the bottom like that, okay? And again, everybody's neck might look a little bit different. Yours does not need to look just like mine. Remember, you're a different artist than me, and so the way that you draw might be different than me, and that's okay. You wanna make it your way. But again, if you wanna make a change to something, just go ahead and erase it and redo it until you get it the way you want it. I'm gonna add some spots to my neck, just using circle or oval shapes. Some are gonna be bigger, some are gonna be smaller, some might just be a half shape on the edge of the neck. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spots. That looks good. I'm also leaving enough space between it so I can have that all colored in. Okay, now speaking about color here, okay, let's put, look, back at my, look back at my finished example real quick. Again, we're gonna use one color for the background, okay? The background is the space behind the giraffe, okay? My background color on this one was orange. Notice I'm using orange elsewhere. I have it one on this spot here and inside the ears, but there's also some green separating um, that orange and some purple and red separating the orange from here. If the orange was touching the edge, or maybe I use orange here instead of yellow, it was touching that, it would kind of all blend together, even though we're gonna use black to outline it, it would still kind of blend together and it would, your draft isn't gonna stand out as much. So think about your background color and make sure it's a color that you're not gonna really wanna to use too much on your draft or not at all, okay? So make sure you're doing that, whether you're using crayons or markers or colored pencils or maybe you're even painting at home, um, that's up to you. So again, I'm gonna be using crayons for my example here. So for my background on this one, I'm gonna be using a green. So when I color this in, I'm gonna color around the giraffe. When I get to the pencil lines of my giraffe, I'm going to just kind of go along with that. So I'm going with that line. So, if, cause if I start going this way, left and right, I might accidentally cross over into my giraffe's neck when you color that way. So make sure you go the same direction as your line. So as I get up here, I'm gonna kind of go around the neck. What you can also do, and what I'm gonna demonstrate now, is creating what I call a force field around your giraffe or a barrier around your giraffe. So I'm gonna kind of just follow the lines around the ears and the head here. And this is gonna kind of create a barrier so that if I am coloring towards my giraffe, this is gonna hopefully help me stop my crayon enough that I don't get too much color on the inside. And if you do, again, accidents happen and that's okay. Your giraffe's gonna be really colorful anyway. But what I'm trying to just do now is almost outline the edge of the giraffe, but creating kind of a thick line barrier all the way around. Now I'm gonna go down with the neck here, same direction as that line is going, okay? So I'm just gonna continue going with that. So you can color in different directions, but try to fill it in, try not to have too much white showing. Crayon is a, uh, Sometimes it does have a scribble, scribble effect a little bit. The, the texture of my wood table here is showing up a little bit. I'm not sure if you can see that on the, on the video, but that's okay. Markers aren't gonna have that necessarily. Paint's not gonna have that. Color pencils might pick up you know, the texture of the table that you're working on a little bit too. My finished example, I actually use oil pastels. If you've never used oil pastels before, they're similar to crayons, but they add a little bit of oil to the wax and so it creates a little more softer and a little bit more of a smooth medium compared to crayon which is a little bit of a harder wax and so when you color with pastels it can get really messy and get all of your fingers but what's nice about it is that it can really smooth and blend together so you don't have those white spaces as much as you might with crayon but i don't have any oil pastels with me so 
I'm just going to go ahead and use Crane instead. So just finishing up the color now on the background. So again, it's just one color only. And that color now, the green, I'm actually not going to use it at all for the rest. Again, you can use it, like if I put it in this spot here because there might be another color around it to protect it from the background, that's okay. But I'm just going to ignore it. I've got a lot of different crayons here, so I'm going to use different colors for that. So next up, I'm going to color in this down. I'm just going to kind of color it. Um, kind of the way I started drawing. I'm going to start with this part, then move up to the head and the ears, then I'm going to do the neck last. And so I'm going to use one color here for the main part of this now. I'm going to use a orange. So I'm going to color that in. I'm going to use one color for this part, but if you want to use multiple colors, that's okay. Again, I'm just notice how when I'm coloring, I'm coloring kind of the direction that the lines are going. So since the oval was going around this way, that's the way I'm coloring. I'm not going against the line because then I might cross over into sections that I don't want to have color in right now. So it just helps me color a little more neatly when I go around those shapes. Same thing if I kind of go around each of these circles like that and protect those, it'll help me kind of curve my color around those as well. Again, you don't have to use the same colors that I'm using. Make your giraffe your way. Use the colors that you want to use. All right, so I've got that done. I'm going to use the same color for both nostrils. I'm going to use this turquoise blue to color both those. Again, if you want to do them two different colors, that's fine. I'm just going to have them match, though. I like to have them be similar in that sense. I'm going to use a few more different colors for the head, though. So again, I used a green there. So even though it's a kind of a lighter green, um, I'm going to stay away from greens right now. I'm going to pull out a kind of purple and a magenta, a dark purple here. I'm going to start with that one. I'm going to color around the spots. If I just color over the spots, then there really would have been no point of having them there in the first place if I just color over them. So I want to color around them so I can do them a different color and make them stand out with a different color there. I'm going to stop the purple right there. I'm going to transition to this magenta, kind of a dark pink. So right now I'm coloring over the eyebrows. It might be a little harder to see, but again, I'm going to outline with the black later and that the black will help those things kind of stand out a little bit. I'm going to color around these spots here again. Don't color over them, color around them. And I'm going to switch to a dark red orange here. So even though I use orange for the snout too, this is different enough that it's going to have a different look to it. Color around this spot as well. I'm going to color this ear, this red orange as well. Use a little yellow inside of there. I'm going to use a light purple for this ear. So again, just like Henry Matisse, we're trying to make our giraffes as colorful as possible. I'm going to use the magenta here for the in part, inside part of the ear. And I'm going to use some blue for the antlers. I'm going to use a yellow green for the eyes. And on the spots I'm going to color in as well. I'm just going to use some of the colors I've already used. So I'm just going to grab the yellow here. I don't want to do the red orange here because the red orange is around it, so it'll just kind of blend together. And so I'm going to use that dark purple again here. I'll use the blue here and the light purple there. Again, you can use different colors. I'm just kind of repeating some of the colors I had throughout. Now it gets into the neck here. I am going to leave this part of the eyes white. I do just to help it stand out. Just like we have white of our eyes and color of the eyes, I'm going to leave that on the giraffe as well. So I'm going to start to do um, more different colors on the neck of the giraffe and the spots are all going to be different colors too. Start with this color 
here, kind of a pink, light orange, kind of like a melon color. It's like a cantaloupe. I'm gonna stop the color there, and you can you can stop your colors right. Maybe you just want to use one color all throughout. That's fine too. I'll switch over to a light pink here. But I like to have the colors be different throughout, but I do try to pick colors that kind of are similar with each other, like this light orange and this light pink kind of go well together, so the, the flow of one color into the next looks pretty good. I use that magenta that I used up here again, because that's similar to this pink, but it's just a little bit darker. And then I'm just going to go ahead and switch over to a purple. I come down to the side here, a little bit of purple here. Come around this big spot and then I'll change. I'll do one more color on the bottom of the neck. Then use as many different colors as you want. I'm going to finish up with this strawberry red here. Color around the spots, don't color over them. If you do color over them by accident, maybe just find a darker color that will cover it up. All right, so my giraffe is almost done. I just have these white spots left to color in. Just like up here, I'm gonna use colors I've already used. I'm gonna use that dark red-orange again. Use the blue on my big spot. So my giraffe is looking good, very colorful, just like a Henry Matisse painting. Now one more step that we need to do is we just need to outline it. So whatever medium you're using, again, I'm using crayons, I'm going to use a black crayon. If you're using markers, use a black marker. If you're using colored pencil, use a black colored pencil. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to outline everything that we originally drew with our pencil. And if you want, like I'm doing, I'm making the lines actually a little thicker than they originally were, just so my giraffe is nice and bold. So this would kind of be a thin line, but if I go back over it a little bit more, it's gonna make it a little bit thicker. I'm also gonna go over each of my spots, because again, I did draw those with pencil. So whatever I drew with pencil, I'm now gonna go over those pencil lines with the black. I'm not going over the separation of my colors. Those are just gonna stay color transitioning to another color. But what I originally drew in pencil, so remember I drew that oval, and make sure you double check everything, that you got everything drawn. Sometimes students might forget the nostrils, or maybe they forget forgot to redraw the mouth. Whatever it is, draw it back in or around the nostrils a couple times to make a thicker black circle around there. Go over the arch of the eyes, circle of the eyes, I have those eyebrows in, I want to make shell up again with this black, and then finally I have the arched part of the head, little antlers, and the ears. Everything looks good, right? No, I forgot one thing. What did I forget? I forgot the spots here next to the eyes. So again, double check your work. Make sure that everything you originally drew with a pencil is now outlined with your black. All right, and there we have it. My Henry Matisse inspired giraffe is complete. Very colorful um, and using, a, using lines and shapes to make it 
Um, but then again, using one background color and then inside the draft is as colorful as possible using whatever colors you want. Thanks again for stopping by today. I hope you had a lot of fun creating your Henry Matisse inspired giraffe. Uh, remember, if you are one of my students, you can take a picture of your giraffe and email it to me and I might feature it in a future Hooray art video. Uh, you can also subscribe to my channel above here. Uh, you can also share any comments or questions with me down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And until next time, remember to stay positive, always inspire, show creativity, and be the best version of yourself. Have a great day.